Oh, seriously, another well, one was a place for say, it. Say Hyam gets injured. Mm. He's not going to recover quickly and come back fast as he Hyam now. No, he's sure. age 37 or yeah, whatever yeah. he is. Wouldn't Scott Moore be an option there? Yeah. I can see that so. happening. But Possibly. anyway. Hmm? Uh, the next one is contract issues. Discuss. Discuss. I know you put a question mark after it, so it's contract issues. Discuss. No, we don't want to, Carl. This is an extension of the Solomon issue in a way. Mm. Um, as, what I would say is I think it's probably a little bit too easy, it seems, for players to break contracts. Yeah. You know? Ah, oh, I feel a bit homesick. I'm not, I'm not coming back. Ah, oh, I'm uh, wanting to earn more money in a different code, so I'm yeah. not coming back. I think the homesick. Oh, I've retired. Is, yeah, oh, I've retired now. The difficulty is with with the with the homesickness one. It goes both ways because there'll be plenty of English lads that go over to Australia and struggle yes. to adapt, and there's a cultural side to that. And I do think we need to support people in terms of mental health when it comes to um, ingratiating yourself and integrating into. Is sent not a foreign culture, but a foreign inverted commas culture, a culture that's going to be slightly different and be a bit disorienting. Well, you're far, far away from your family. Precisely. Sort of stuff, yeah. So I, I do have some sympathy for people like that if you go about it in the right way. You can't hold the same view of those people as you hold of uh, Solomon. No, like you say, far from it. You know. Our, I hope that what, our successfully league, arguably the people. biggest star in Super League. Did this to an NRL club mm. <laughs> to come back to Super League. Yeah. So it's not like it hasn't happened the other way. Yeah. Um, in that regard, in terms of the swapping for the homesickness and the wanting to be around your family when yeah. life, big life changes are happening and that sort of stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. One thing I would say in terms of contract issues is that clubs will obviously be lo- re looking at any clauses around retirement in the wake of Solomon's move to sale. Yeah. I guess there'll be a I guess there'll be a clause inserted into everyone's contract as standard for going forward that you can only retire at the club's discretion. Yeah. Or if you retire, then there needs to be a moratorium on the amount of time between your retirement and any future payment from from professional sport yeah yeah so they would say you know if you retire for whatever reason then you can't then come back within 18 months two years yeah and to play any do, professional sport if you do come back yeah. then you owe us money yeah exactly that's, that's how, how you have to be stipulated because yeah. not stopping them then from doing it just no. putting a cost in there to because yeah. Cas- Castleford should have had a transfer fee yeah, for the surf, I hope they player. successfully pursue the player that they've inflated the value of yeah. massively. I don't want them to pursue him through the course and be successful in terms of like shitting on Danny Solomona, but I do want them to be successful in terms of the precedent that it would set. Well, I want some of Don- Danny Solomona's extra pennies going to Castleford. Yeah, they've created the talent that is in a, in a lot of ways. He was not a prolific try scorer at London. No, I'm, and he, what I mean is, I'm not. I'm just pragmatic about yeah. it. I'm like, this isn't about punishing Dennis Solomona. It should just be about setting the precedent, and it's as a result of that, that gets some of that brass back. It's interesting that Leeds took a much harder line on Seguiaro until they were able to sort out a replacement than yeah. say. Well, has their stand softened since then? Because I've not followed this as closely. I know they've got the. Uh, well, the I think they're still sort of saying is not being allowed to just go and register with someone else for yeah. nothing. Good, good for them. Which I think is, you know, that 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 is good for them. Mm. They're not saying you have to come back; you have to play. But they're saying We're going to we want something for it because yeah, we've lost out here. Of course, um, which they obviously have. They've lost it's massive time. Arguably the best, one of the best players in the competition next year. Yeah. Arguably the best hooker in the competition next year behind James Roby, mm. and potentially even then. Yeah. And now is a potential man of steel, yeah. and is is not going to play for them now. Mm. The, the hooker they've signed, I think, is a very good talent. Yeah. Um, but it's not the same as James Segui. <laughs> no, no, and. Uh, I uh, told you he wouldn't be starting this season. From, do you remember when I said he won't start in 2017? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, no, he's signed for his in a full year. Like, we were both of that sort of opinion. I told we, you though? he wouldn't we be playing for we him in 2017. Like I was astounded that he signed up to deal yeah. with them. I was astounded yeah. that there wasn't anybody in the air app. And clearly there is now. So. And then the, uh, yeah, you you lot. <laughs> yeah. You need a hooker, don't you, sir? Take him, yeah, I'll take him a cut off. Um, I don't fancy him coming over and playing in England in the World Club Challenge. No. I don't think he'd get abused. But. The, uh, and then the other... The Sandow thing, I think it sounds as much like Warrington were happy to yeah. be away from the burden. Like, what he could produce on the field maybe wasn't worth the history that went around. With it, yeah. Which doesn't surprise me really with Sandow. Yeah. He does seem like a bit. Or boring. it was a bit sour grapes and stuff. Mm. Right, okay. Um, next sort of short question from Colin is um, Medic Bob from I'm a Celebrity or Dr. Bob Phillips? Dr. Bob Phillips every single day of the week not just because he's up against somebody I've never heard I can That's proudly it, yeah. say I've never watched I'm a Celebrity no, I'm, I'm, I've um, got a clue but uh, you could put Dr. Bob Phillips I would Bob like Phillips Colin to be more you know 
rounded in his viewing, maybe watch a documentary or something rather than celebrate start pissing around. If he'd words. said Dr. Bob Phillips or Barack Obama, I would have some thinking to do. But, nah. No one comes close. No one holds a candle on my Dr. Bob. Nah, but I can't. Yeah, uh, to be honest, Colin's lucky I included this question. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I know, because it's, it's not like... It's only out of respect... It's, it's not like we've had to flesh out the rundown, not even on page two yet. It's only out of general respect for Colin that I care to him. <laughs> um, Excellent. Well, this looks like a better question. New rule changes explain, plus how will they improve, enhance the game? Well, Do you on. like them? I have no strong feelings. I know that they're more... It's moving things towards more a, un, a more unified way of running the game. Let's assume everyone's seen the new rules mm. rather than go through them, or the rule changes, rather yeah. than go through them all. Well, there are plenty of opportunity to read the links, haven't they? The only one I worry about is the increased distance um, at scrums. Yeah. Which I think might cause injury. But other than that, yes. I'm not necessarily sure that they are... Game changes. I'm not a big fan of the seven tackle rule, mm. but I am a fan of getting Quality. a consistent set of rules. Yeah. And I think the NRL like it because it's what it does is creates a scenario where it's more there's more possibility of a team in the last minute of a game going all the way up the field yeah. from a kick that runs dead. Yeah. And also there's that tension about whether a kick's going to go dead or not. And that's been enhanced by the rule change for... Which is the one that the obvious one that always should have been brought in, which is the one about the the ball. You can't take the ball dead in goal as such. Yeah, it has yeah. to go dead itself. Well, that's been um, a bugbear for you anyway, hasn't it? Which I can yeah. Get, I can that get will behind. reward good kicks, which is good. Um, yeah, I, I, I think I like it mm. uh, totally. Um, the scrum one I don't like either. So yeah. what what do you, what do you think? What do you what's your problem with it? What, in terms of the distance? It's 10 metres back rather than 5 from the scrum, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, it gives opportunity for people to build up more of a head of steam out of scrums, and I think it will just nominally increase the chance of injury. Well, that's it. The rule changes, as they were... The criteria they sort of broadly mentioned when Wood did the press release and the quotes about it and stuff, was that they were going to be make the game more entertaining and safer mm. for players. I don't think this makes it any safer for players. I'm not sure it makes it any more entertaining either really mm. if anything and they were oh the other thing was to speed up the game so like the tap for the 4020 which is like the NRL that speeds it up that's fine yeah. happy with that yeah. I don't think this speeds it up because what you're going to get is players cheating out of the scrum earlier so oh, you yeah, get more of those yeah. penalties for people coming out the back of the scrum too soon yeah or you're going to get loads of reset scrums because yeah. people are cheating out the scrum all the time. And yeah, they want to be the one to make I a think tackle. You'll find the line encroaching yeah. a lot more as well, and that'll breed penalties. And the only part of the pitch where it really is going to make a difference is near the try lines. Mm. Really? Yeah. I, I just don't think it's. I think it's, and it's going to mean the collisions are going to be bigger. Yeah. Perhaps it puts a premium on kicking again. If you successfully, if you kick a successful forty twenty. It further improves potentially. Well, you only the have, a, you have a tap anyway. So you get from that. It's a oh, tap now, isn't it? It's not a scrum, is it? So oh, it's well. a ten meter anyway from a forty twenty yeah. now with the tap. Oh well. I just don't. I think maybe, yeah, maybe you'll see a few more tries for up scored because it will open things up a little bit. But I think yeah. also you'll see bigger collisions. If you you'll pick up an attacking scrum, running around more, yeah. trying to break out of scrums, it'll slow the game down. If anything, I think if you pick up an attacking scrum inside your opponent's twenty or ten meters, that gives you a massive opportunity to. Build up ahead of steam and make something happen. Then, but and does it actually encourage better play? Because no, well, that's the point. Isn't it? Conversely, it takes away a skill element, though, because how tempted teams going to be to line up the biggest, fastest forward they've got on a, the first ball out from the scrum and just crash, and then hope he can sneak an offload out, yeah. which is all that you do anyway half the time. I don't think mm. it, that one. I don't like the rest of them are okay, and I really like the one about not not being able to just put a ball dead. As easily. Mm, definitely. Okay, uh, next oh, question. This one's good mm. from Colin again. What's your best and worst Christmas present ever? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas Merry to you, Christmas too, to you Colin. Yeah, um, I don't really have a worst Christmas present. I'm trying to think about it if I've got anything. Oh, I remember when I was about 14. Do you remember when Freddie Mercury died? <laughs> and, that's not the present. Um, <laughs> and Queen brought. <laughs> you didn't see this one coming, did you? Um, do you know when Queen brought out a posthumous album yes, of yeah. songs? Yeah. It was called Made, Made in Heaven. Heaven. Yeah. And it was all stuff that Free Mercury had sort of done before he passed away. I remember getting given that uh, being about 13 or 14. And I like Queen. I'm a big Queen fan. Even bigger Freddie Mercury fan um, in terms of his talent and everything. Yeah, yeah. But I remember opening that and just thinking... Ugh. But 
again, it was a gift, and I don't want to be ungrateful. So that's kind of the one that sticks out for me. Um, but other than that, I mean, I'm, I'm a 34-year-old bloke with kids. I like getting socks and underpants and, and toiletries because it saves me a job. So I'm pretty happy just to get that. I'm dead easily pleased. But the best Christmas present I ever got in terms of my reaction and as it being a surprise and just not knowing it was coming was uh, Christmas 1993. We were still living in Bradford at the time. And my sister and I, for a period of about six weeks in the summer... I'd been lobbying my parents to buy us a Super Nintendo, the SNES. Yeah, right? yeah. And we'd basically been told, no, we're not getting one. So we kind of left it. So that was about six months prior. On Christmas morning, we come downstairs and open up all our presents. And in the corner, there's a huge box, like ridiculously big, like almost wardrobe-sized box. Yeah. And it's all wrapped up. And we didn't really know what to make of it. And my mum and I go, no, that's for the end. Don't worry about that. So we opened all our presents and we got loads of stuff and we were spoiled rotten and, and all that. Seems life. to be a trait in your family. I think well, I like these little a tri- big present for a late reveal. Well, I like these little tricks. Oh, yeah. It's t- oh, definitely. Mum and Dad t- definitely taught me my, my yeah, Christmas yeah. showmanship. Um, so we got to the end of our presents and they said, right, you can go and open the box. And we opened the box and then it was another box and then it was another box. And it was a- so that four boxes until eventually we got down to the Super Nintendo. And I was never more, I've never been more grateful or happy about a present. Really, we were just dead excited, and it was like amazing for us. So, like a Russian doll of, of precisely <laughs> that. Like we had gone out and like got to the trouble of getting successively smaller boxes to fuck with us, but it wasn't fucking with us because it, it just threw us off the scent. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, we were made up with that. And my sister and I got innumerable hours of joy out of that Super Nintendo. And so that's the one that sticks out for me in terms of you know best ever because that's the most excited I've been at like getting a Christmas present. So. I think, I mean, every year I get the new Wigan shirt, so of course, yeah. that, that usually Standard. makes me quite happy. Or sometimes it's been mixed up with a, like a Steelers shirt or something if I'm not like the Wigan shirts. Yeah. Um, probably my best Christmas present, certainly pro- one I've got the most use out of, is this hoodie I'm wearing now, actually. Yeah, I haven't got for me yeah. a few years back. Yeah. Um, I, I love that to pieces. The worst is a clear... It didn't even. I didn't even get it because the present went missing, and then I got it. At oh, my birth- I thought you were going to say it was a book you already owned. Like, <laughs> I've, I've had that a few I'd times. Have to hang my head. Emma even did that this year. Did you really? She lived in the same house as me. Oh, I feel so much the better then. With me and oh. bought me a book I already had. Oh, I'm off the hook for last year then. If she's done that, <laughs> anyway. So I was uh, yes. Well, I got it for my birthday, which is about three, two, or three, two and a half, three weeks after Christmas. But it was meant to be for Christmas, but my mum had lost it at her house, and if she's listening, she'll know exactly what I'm talking about already. <laughs> so, yeah, my mum gave me the, the Legally Blonde box set. Fuck off! Right? Why? Well, she thought she I really... it lying about? No, she thought I really liked the film. She was, like, gen- genuinely <laughs> you, convinced of it. She could recall this conversation that we'd had, right. where I... Where she, and she recalled it because she was so surprised that I was so... Like glowing with praise and love for for the legally blonde films. <laughs> so this is the Reese Witherspoon comedy drama, yeah. comedy yeah, yeah, legal, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, like, snaps for Mark and all that. I don't know what the sat sing. I've What's never that? seen any of these <laughs> films. It turns out, and she realised about six months later, she'd had a dream where this conversation had happened. How much and is on the that? back of the dream had bought me the Legally Blonde DVD box set. The thing is, by the time it came to me, because it got lost behind a cou- her couch, then something got spilled behind the couch, so it was water damaged. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a slightly mouldy box set. No, no, I didn't take it. I was like, what is this? I just <laughs> left it. Oh, mate, that was insane. <laughs> so that's the worst Christmas present I've ever had, which was <laughs> actually a birthday present, but was a birthday. <laughs> that, is, that is absolutely tremendous. <laughs> well done to your mum. I mean, she's a she's a she's a kooky she's character. A, she's a character. At the, at the at the don't time, surprise me was, at all. No, no, that was that was her outdoing herself. Oh, mate, that's that's what a wonderful story. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Excellent. So, Colin Renda, another from Colin Renda. And this is a great one too. This is his last one, but mm. I think it saved the best till last. He certainly did. Remake Home Alone with three rugby players playing the roles of Kevin McAllister, and who's the kid, mm-hmm. and Harry and Marv, who are the crooks. Brilliant. So, well, who have you got playing, fulfilling the Macaulay Culkin role? Well, it's pretty easy for me. It's Jacob Miller. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's slightly better. I had Jordan Lilly. Playing the role because he's quite baby faced as well. 
Well, I'm going to make it an all wakey cast. So oh, I'm going to have right. Uncle Two Skulls mm-hmm. and Keegan Hurst as the as the robbers. Right. I think they do a really good.